Hello everybody, and welcome back to another video. Today, I am bringing to you something that I don't do very often, a documentary, in fact. So, here is my documentary about the Valley Railroad, Essex Steam Train, and Riverboat. Now for the history of the Valley Railroad. According to EssexSteamTrain.com, in the 1830s, the first growth of railroads in, began in New England. After one failed attempt to start, the Valley Railroad Company, led by the president of the Charter Oak Life Insurance Company, James C. Walkley, obtained the state charter to build and form the company on July 17, 1868. During 1868 to 1869, survey crews worked at, to map the, to map out the lines from Hartford to Saverick Point, and in 1870, actual construction of the line began. With the ease of building a rail line in the Connecticut River Valley that had no tunnels or major bridges, the line was completed during the summer of 1871. The first ceremonial train run over the 45-mile line took place on July 29, 1871. Two days later, the first regular train was run, and on August 24, 1871, the Connecticut Valley Railroad finally declared an official opening. The initial schedules of trains operating along the Valley Railroad called for one mixed passenger and freight train and four passenger trains each way daily, except for Sunday, with 15 stops along the way. Financial trouble plagued many early railroads, and the Connecticut Valley found theirs in 1876 when it defaulted on its second mortgage bonds and was placed in receivership. On July 1, 1880, a company called the Hartford and Connecticut Valley Railroad took control, but simultaneously, the New Haven Railroad was rapidly building up its stature in southern New England. Seeing an opportunity to sell their new line at a good price, the owners of the Hartford and Connecticut Valley Railroad convinced the New Haven Railroad that it should buy control. In 1882, the New Haven Railroad did, and 10 years later, in 1892, the Hartford and Connecticut Valley Railroad became part of the New Haven system. The incorporation was good for the Valley Railroad, as the New Haven Railroad put money and improvements into the line. During this time, the Valley Railroad grew to its limit, never being more than a busy branch line with passengers and freight service, consisting of delivery of supplies and merchandise to communities and factories along the line. Shortly after World War I, as roads, automobiles, and trucks improved, the Valley Railroad saw a reduction in service. By the late 1950s, it saw only weekday local service, with the speed on the line down to 30 miles per hour from nearly 55 miles per hour. Hard times fell on the New Haven Railroad itself, and in 1961, it fell into bankruptcy. With a major reduction on spending money to maintain its branch lines, the Valley Railroad soon fell into disrepair, finding only two slow-moving freight trains a week using the rusted rails. Business failed along the Valley Railroad line, and the New Haven also failed. In 1968, the New Haven was no longer a railroad, with the last train run over the valley in March 1968. Concerned volunteers got together to keep the railroad from being torn up by the new owners, Penn Central. This group managed to obtain a temporary lease from Penn Central in 1969, and on August 15, 1969, the Penn Central turned over this branch line to the state of Connecticut. The state of Connecticut granted a formal lease to the Valley Railroad Company on July 1, 1970. This lease authorized the company to use the 22.67 miles of track for freight and passenger service on July 29, 1971, almost 100 years to the day of the first ceremonial run. After thousands of hours of mostly volunteer effort, the first train of the new Valley Railroad steamed from Essex to Deep River and has been steaming ever since. Now on to the history of the locomotives, starting with number 40. Built by the American Locomotive Company at their Dunkirk, New York works in August 1920, number 40 has had a long and interesting career. It was one of an order for three identical units constructed for the Portland, Astoria, and Pacific Railroad to haul train loads of logs and lumber. Unfortunately, the PA&P was never completed, so the locomotives sat idle until they were sold to other railroads. Number 101, or 40, was sold to the Minarets and Western Railway for similar service. When that railroad could not pay its debts, the locomotive was given to the Southern Pacific Railroad, which used which sold it to a used locomotive dealer, which in turn sold it to the Aberdeen and Rockfish Railroad in North Carolina as their number 40. On the A&R, it pulled freight and passenger trains until about 1950, when it was retired and stored in their engine house. Here it remained until it was discovered by an employee of the Valley Railroad, it was purchased in 1977 and loaded on the flat cars for its trip to Essex, and a new career pulling train loads of tourists for the Essex Steam Train and Riverboat. On to locomotive number 97. Built by the American Locomotive Company at their Patterson, New Jersey shops in 1923, 
Number 97 has had a long and pretty interesting career. It was one of three identical units built for stock, an unusual practice in the locomotive business, as usually locomotives were built only when an order was placed. It was finally sold in 1926 to the Birmingham and Southeastern Railroad, an Alabama short line. On the BNSC, it pulled freight and passenger trains until about 1958, when it was retired and stored. It was purchased by a New York publisher and was eventually moved to Essex, and in 1972 began a new career pulling tourist trains for the Essex Steam Train and Riverboat. It last ran in December 2010. Currently, number 97 is out of service, pending major mechanical repairs and a 1472 service day federal inspection. Now on to the oddball of the locomotive group, number 3025. Built by the Tangshan Locomotive Roll and Rolling Stock Works at Tangshan, China, in July 1989, it is one of the newest steam locomotives operating in the United States. Tangshan began building steam locomotives in 1880 and was the last factory in the world to build steam locomotives, completing its final order in 1999. This design of the locomotive is typical of American locomotives built in the 1920s until the end of the steam era. It was purchased for the Knox and Kane Railroad in Pennsylvania. The Valley Railroad purchased it when the K&K went out of business and auctioned off their locomotives and cars. They dismantled it and shipped it in sections to Essex, where it was rebuilt by employees and volunteers to like new condition during a two-and-a-half-year project. Since we operate on sections of the former New York, New Haven, and Hartford Railroad, it was decided to letter it New Haven and give it a New Haven number, 3025, in honor of the New Haven's hundreds of steam locomotives, all of which were scrapped. Today, it is still steaming at the Essex Steam Train and Riverboat, pulling tourist trains. And that will wrap it up for this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and credits to EssexSteamTrain.com for all of the information. Again, thank you all so much for watching, and have a good night slash day.